All right, welcome to our webinar. We are OpExecs. We are your operational excellence experts. Today, we're talking about a topic that's near and dear to our hearts because it has to get into, it, it has to relate, it relates to execution and implementation. And that's when we start to get really excited because we have the data, we know what the root causes are, we brainstormed some solutions, now we're ready to go. How do you get your team organized and structured to prioritize doing the right things first? We have an expert here today, Fidel Kandel, who happens to be outstanding at transformation, has worked with a lot of different companies to do this. And today I'm gonna to turn it over to Fidel to tell us a little bit about the impact versus effort matrix and how you can use it fairly simply for your own projects. All right, Susan, thank you for the introduction. Um, let's start off by supposing that you and your team have been working to resolve a particular problem. And you've solicited some ideas and you've landed on say maybe two or three solutions that are all very good. So at this point, um, because your options are limited, you collectively decide that you're gonna just start with one idea, then the second and third, you're all set, you're good to go, you're off and running. But what if your team comes up with, let's say a dozen, all really good solutions. So at this point, you've got a little bit of a dilemma because you've got to be realistic about balancing your resources. You've got people, you got funding, right? We all live in a world where it's uh, we've got budgets and maybe there's other competing projects out there. So with that, what we're gonna talk about today is something called um, the impact versus effort matrix. And Susan, if you can go to the next stage here, we're gonna talk about why prioritizing solutions is really important. And um, we're also gonna look at a tool called the impact versus effort matrix, which should kind of looks at two variables, one is What's the impact of the solution on the root cause and how much effort is required to execute that idea? What we're gonna to try to do then is we're gonna look at how to use the tool by using an actual case study. All right, so let's move on to the next slide here. And um, let's suppose that you and your team, as I mentioned earlier, you've narrowed your list of root causes and your team has brainstormed a lot of solutions, right? So during the brainstorming, uh, you got a lot of really worthy solutions. And now the next question is, which one do you implement first? You might be tempted to start it off with some of the easier solutions first. Now, is that the right approach? Uh, maybe it is, you know, you've got to talk about it through with your team here. But um, what will your customers think, right? Uh, they might see that certain key personnel has been redeployed somewhere else. So they may have a voice in all of this. We're gonna look at why prioritizing is a critical aspect of continuous improvement, right? So the first thing is it helps you to evaluate some of the risks uh, to manage your expected uh, return on the solution. So that's number one. Number two, it helps to make the right intelligent decisions by using data. Um, in this case, we're looking at to consider the time involved uh, and the effort involved of your resources and the impact of those solutions. It also finally helps you just kind of avoid getting overwhelmed with a big problem by just chunking down the solutions into smaller, more manageable pieces here. All right, so I mentioned um, a tool called the Impact Versus Effort Matrix. And what it does here is first, it rates the impact of the solution against the root cause. And it does so also by assessing them based on how much effort is required to yield the benefit. And when we talk about effort, we're really talking about how much time is involved to execute a problem, how much funding you have available, that could be capital funding or expense funding as well. And there are resources, the people, the materials, equipment that you're gonna need in order to get things done. All right, so if you were to Google impact versus effort matrix, you'll probably run across something that looks like this two by two matrix, right? It's got four boxes. And you'll see on one axis, you have the impact 
On the other axis, usually the x-axis, you'll have effort, right? These are the two variables that you're looking at. So let's say that you're looking at a solution that has a high impact and requires a, a low effort. This is usually what we refer to as a low-hanging fruit. That's it. That's going to fall into the green box. Alternatively, if you've got something that has little impact but requires a lot of effort, that will land somewhere in a red box. Those are your longer term kind of problems and solutions. And then everything else kind of falls into these yellow squares. What we're actually going to propose is something called a banded matrix. So you've still got your impact and your effort outlined in your two axes. But now you'll notice there's a scale from 1 to 10 for the impact and a scale of 1 to 10 for how much effort is required. Now you still keep the green zone, which are your low-hanging fruits. You've got your yellow kind of medium impact, medium effort activities. And then you've got your longer um, effort, lower impact. Those are falling into your red banded zone here. All right, so before we get into the tool, let's talk about some of the pros and cons of each one. So on the two by two, it's got some advantage. It's very popular, as I said, it's all over the internet. It can be easily applied to just about any variable and it's simple visual. I mean, there's only four boxes involved here. Now, some of the disadvantages are it's very easy to miscalculate because particularly anything that's kind of medium effort, medium impact could easily fall in, into any of those four boxes, right? It's very subjective. There's no numbers involved. It's just straight up just the gut feel of what your team uh, decides. So it's prone to more bias. One thing to keep in mind, it does not consider any unfavorable or negative effects of that solution towards the root cause. All right, so we're not really concerned right now with unintended consequences. So that is a drawback for this type of um, tool. The banded matrix type has a couple of advantages. It is more objective. And we'll get into why that is, because it does use a rating scale. It's more descriptive, right? So it's got um, a lot more visually that you can use to explain to either your team or to your supervisors why you want to select a certain priority uh, of your proposed solutions. And therefore, it can be that much more effective to use. The disadvantages are it does take longer to fill out. It's a multi-part visual, and we'll get into why that is. It's just a little bit more complex. And it does use a rating scale, uses two scales, actually, which we're going to get into in a little bit. Um, you're going to have to define that each time that you want to use the tool. You're going to have to go and define what are those rating scales. Like its counterpart, it does not consider any unfavorable effects or negative effects. It's not really set up for that. We're only thinking about things that are going to have a a positive effect on the root cause and solve the problem. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So we're gonna use the banded type and we're gonna use, as I mentioned, there's two scales. The first one is the impact scale. So this means how much impact does the solution have on the root cause? So as an example, and again, this is only an example that I'm setting up here. Let's say that you're gonna use a low impact and that's usually a one or a two. These are things that could be risky or have a small impact on the root cause or your KPI metric. So let's say something that maybe you'll get a 10 to 20% reduction in defects or maybe a 10 or 20% improvement on your service. So kind of a modest gain. Medium, a scale of three to seven on the scale of one to 10, right? So a three or two or seven, these have strong or valuable impact on the root causes or your KPI metric. So somewhere, let's see, a 30 to 70% defect reduction or a service improvement would be a good way to define that. A high impact, so eight, nine, or 10, this would fully address the root cause in the metric, and you could potentially gain, let's say, 80% of a defect reduction or an 80% improvement on your service the way that you've defined it, right? So again, this is only an example. On the effort rating scale, this is a little bit more cut and dry. This is assessing how much effort each solution is going to have towards implementing or executing that. So again, as an example, let's say a low amount of effort, scale of one to three, something that could be done, let's say within first two months, right? This is low hanging fruit stuff, maybe cost 
less than $50,000 of expense funding, and you can use all your members of your current team. So no need to bring anybody in from the outside. Medium effort, let's say something that could be done within a year, you might have to spend more money, let's say 50 to 200,000 of expense funding, and you might have to bring in a subject matter expert or somebody, let's say from the maintenance team, something that it's it's not too difficult, but you know you're you're going to have to add somebody from the outside of the team. A high effort, that's a nine or a ten. This is a multi-year project. Might require some capital planning or funds, and you might need to bring in some external resources as a result. So, in other words, you might need to bring in an outside consulting firm, an outside engineering firm. Uh, you might it might be more more complex thinking more. Uh, of your um, team resources are gonna be involved in this kind of project. So this is an example of a rating scale. All right, with that, so how do we use this? Um, what I would like to propose here is I'm gonna turn it back over to Susan and she can explain how this tool actually can get implemented. Okay, this is a fun project that I was part of and it, it was working with a fire and emergency management system organization and more specifically, those that are in charge of the ambulances that take people from an emergency situation to the hospital. And their objective was to speed up that turnaround time that it takes for the ambulance crew to transition the person to the emergency department and then get back on the road again. So what was really great about this project is that the people who were leading the project, they didn't work at the hospital, they didn't work with the EMS team. They were truly outsiders that came in to work with experts to come up with what the root causes were that were driving this cycle time. And they actually made a lot of progress. So they defined their problem as the amount of time that ambulance crews were spending at the hospital waiting for patients to be admitted. And they measured this by when the ambulance crew arrives at the hospital and it ends that time when the hospital staff transfers ownership into their own electronic uh, patient care record system. The team identified some major root causes. You'll learn later that you have to narrow down to what the we call them the vital few root causes. And for them, this was the number of staff resources and triage, the time that was spent entering data into the electronic PCR system, the hospital, whether it had a direct to bed policy or not, the crew activities that happened at the hospital that were unrelated to the patient, and then the accuracy of the data that they were entering into their tracking system. And they got all the group, they got uh, all the experts together. These were the staff, these were the people who were driving the ambulances, these were the EMS personnel, and they identified a whole lot of solutions, 12, uh, matter of fact. And of course, 12 is an overwhelming number of solutions. So then they had to prioritize which ones are we really going to go after? So they used the banded matrix. And you can see on the right the list of solutions, and the matrix is on your left and they use their own rating scale to determine for each of these solutions, what's the impact of it and what's the effort to implement. The first one they came up with adding new triage nurses, new staff into these hospitals where they were bringing patients would have a big impact, but it also would be a big cost and require a lot of buy-in. So it was rated high in impact, but also very high in effort. The next one they look at, they looked at implementing a digital patient registration log instead of the manual one that they were using. The team thought, well, that's probably a very big impact and it could be relatively easy for us to do. We already have the technology. This is just something that we have to invest in. So that rated in the green area, what Fidel called a just go do it or a low hanging fruit. Then they looked at what they call a direct to bed policy where the more sick patients, instead of going to the emergency room, they go right to the bed. Again, probably big impact, but also big effort to get that funded, approved, and implemented, and so forth and so on. They went through all of their solutions and rated them. Several were in the green area, several were in the red, and then you see some in the yellow. So how do you approach this? Well, the, the obvious ones to do first are those that are high impact and low effort. So these were no-brainers for the team to take on first. And then... The next ones to look at, they are also lower effort, but medium impact, because you can implement that perhaps within your own team, not needing to bring in additional resources or capital funding. 
Then the ones to think about, we call them high risk versus reward. You don't want to dismiss these because they have big impact, but you also have to be realistic about the effort it's going to take you to get buy-in to making these changes. And maybe you can do one of these. So the question would be, which one does the organization have the stomach to be able to support? And then finally, those that are low effort, I'm sorry, low impact, and even if they're low effort, you should consider dropping those because even when it's a low effort item, it takes time and resource focus, and you could perhaps be better off doing things that require a little bit more effort, um, but have a greater amount of impact. So this matrix really helps you as a team to prioritize and use data to do it. When you use the the simple one, the, the one that just had the four areas, it gets you started, but it doesn't give you the team's real expertise that you get from the rating scale with a expanded matrix. So it's why we recommend you really think about potentially using this in your own projects. And I'm going to give it back to you, Fidel, to talk a little bit about how if somebody wanted to use this in their project, what would be the steps to go about doing so? Yeah, thank you, Susan. You know, I really, really love the example here. It's a great way to just show how risk versus reward and you're using the expertise of your team members to make intelligent decisions. And as you pointed out, just because something's in the red banded area, it doesn't automatically mean that you just don't do it. Red doesn't mean stop, it don't, don't go further. It just means, hey, we, we need to really carefully think through these ideas because some of them could have a high risk if the reward is there and properly set up for it. So, um, all right, so how do we use this tool? Let's go through some of the steps that Susan kind of outlined for us. So the first thing is we got to narrow the list of the root causes to the vital few, right? So should, Susan mentioned that the team did this. The next thing that you would do here is you hold a brainstorming session to generate those ideas. Now, if your team comes back with one or two ideas, well, then that's it. There's no need to use this tool. You're done, right? You can actually just move forward and you go on and, and execute. Right. Um, but if you have more than a handful of ideas, let's say maybe you've got more than five. Well, you can use the banded matrix and take advantage of the expertise here and just try to then make an intelligent uh, decision with your team's input here. So you'll do that. So for each idea, you're going to assess the impact and the root cause. Again, you're going to use a scale from one to ten. You're going to define that as a team, get agreement. Right. What does it mean? to have impact towards the um, metric that we're driving to, to improve. Uh, then you're also going to then assess the effort that's going to be required to implement each of these ideas. Again, using a 1 to 10 scale, your team is going to define that up front. All right. So once you do that, then you're going to go uh, solution by solution, and you're going to plot them out on the matrix. Right. So you're going to go and say, how much impact does this idea have? How much effort is required? And you put that solution number into the proper box until you get through all of your ideas, right? Next is very important. Now you're gonna prioritize. That means you're gonna have a, a good conversation with your team. You're gonna have a gut check to make sure that yes, we're all in agreement. This is the priority that we wanna execute each one of these solutions, right? So those are the steps that you would take. Let's just go back and recap here, right? So. Uh, we mentioned that if you only have a handful of ideas, you're going to prioritize using some kind of simple method. For example, you're going to vote and get to consensus, and you're going to just move forward. If you have a lot of ideas, this is a good problem to have. But in order to determine, well, how do we prioritize them? Well, we're proposing you use this banded impact versus effort matrix. And why is that? Well, um, it's really uh, a handy tool to help you prioritize and get a really good visual of each of your solutions, right? And the real impactful portion of, is, of this tool is because it enables your team to make informed decisions and then take action. That's really what you want out of this tool. You wanna use it to your advantage, make intelligent decisions based on data, based on facts, and be able to go out and execute and prioritize and then use it for your planning uh, purposes, right? So Susan, I think that's what we have uh, for right now. Um, if I could add a let's... quick comment, I would like to Fidel, and then we can sure. go to questions. The one thing that I mm -hmm. wanna say is that 
I have found in my experience that when teams brainstorm ideas, they want to put everything in the plan. They don't want to prioritize. They want all of the ideas to get on the plan. But then that quickly can bog the team down into not getting enough done that has impact. And when you're doing a continuous improvement project or effort, you really want to start seeing some quick wins. So it's important that the team take this step so that you can build yourselves towards some quick wins, but also think about those that would have larger impact that need to be done instead of just throwing it all on the board and implementing it all at once, because that really diffuses the team's energy and in in, in long-term their impact. And, and, you know, you bring up a very good point here, Susan, uh, something that we kind of touched very briefly, but your team, if they have a sense of sequence of what's first, what's second, what's third, and why, there's some kind of logic to it. It makes them less frustrated because then they understand, okay, there's a game plan involved here. There's a, there's a strategy that we, that we can implement here. And now it makes sense. Right. And you can kind of think through some of these other things. Well, how much effort, how much funding, when is it going to happen? By when do we have to have certain things organized and set up? It just makes everyone kind of uh, row in the same direction. So that makes a lot more sense to do it that way. And last comment, and then we'll go to questions. It also gives you a tool to communicate to your stakeholders. It's easy for them to understand this is where the team is starting. This is why they're starting here. And this is why, you know, maybe later in the year, we're going to need funding or whatever to make this happen. Um, so can you elaborate on why neither the two by two or the banded matrices consider the unfavorable or negative effects? Yeah, that's a good question here. So both matrices are really focused on which solutions have a positive impact or favorable outcome towards resolving the root cause here. Now the two by two, uh, very simple, doesn't take into consideration a unit of measure. So that, that by itself kind of discounts any negative impact. The banded matrix does use a rating scale, but for simplicity of the color codes, we kind of don't take into consideration any unintended consequences or unfavorable effects, uh, which might result in a negative impact. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do that. You, you could come up, you would just have to create a scale that has negative numbers. It would just make the whole um, matrix a little messier, but it can be done. Okay, great. Another question for you. When defining effort with a project team, do you typically look at the active time, you know, when the team is actually doing the work or the total time, the elapsed time, I think, where we factor in the waiting time when you're waiting for approvals or, you know, something is taking time to implement? Um, so I think that's really up to the team to define that um, because it really does uh, matter from project to project or problem that you're trying to solve to another problem. So as long as the team agrees up front, whether you're using the active time or the total time and the whole team is in agreement, that's what we're defining. That's what you use. Now it could change from another project. You may not consider total time. You maybe just want to consider active time. This is why it's very, very important up front to get the definition and agreed with your team and visible so that everyone is on the same page. I guess there's also a part of that where the time elapsed not only affects the um, effort, but it also affects when the impact starts. So, you know, if you were looking for a quick win, time might get you there. So um, I think it, it, from a de defining perspective, the element of time, um, you might want to talk through with your teams, both axes. Hmm. Okay, um, moving on to another one. What is the biggest challenge when using the impact effort matrix? What do you, from your experience, um, see happen? Oh, I love this question here. So the main challenges include accurately assessing both the potential impact and the required effort of a task, right? There's often a tendency towards underestimating the amount of effort. That's kind of we just talked about a little earlier here, because these are very subjective interpretations of what's high, what's low, right? So that's, that's one issue. Um, there's also a potential to neglect other important factors, such as the urgency of a problem 
or listening to the voice of your customers we alluded to earlier in the webinar here. Remember, this is just a tool and relying solely on the matrix can lead to misutilizing your resources if not used carefully. And I would add two to that as well, Fidel. I would say what I have seen is, first of all, project leaders may not want to involve their team to do it. They might say, oh, I know how everything should be rated. I'm going to do my own impact versus effort. And then they put it on a paper and then they try to sell it. Well, you don't have buy-in from the team. So that's really not an effective way to use this tool. It is a team effort and it uses data, which I call people's experience and their input on rating on those ratings as data. If you don't have the team do that, you're not really using data. That's the first problem. The second problem I've seen is people go through the effort to use this and then they ignore the results because they implement what they wanted to implement anyway. So those are the two risks that I would say you have to be cautionary about. And that second one, when you know people go through the effort, but then they don't use the results. The way to counteract that, if you're the project leader, is to keep that matrix visible when you report out to stakeholders in your team meetings, and then make people respond as to why are we working on this when we said this was the bigger priority? That was a great question. And there is a question for you, Susan, on the case study that you shared. In the ambulance case study, how did the team determine those solutions that they dropped? I know you, um, you know, articulated the ones that they did drop, but what was in the back of the minds there? Yeah, that's a sure. great question because in healthcare, it's really hard to get people off of the front line. It's hard to get nurses in a room, doctors in a room, you know, the the registration people in the ER. The, it's really hard to get those people together. But that is indeed what they did. They had it scheduled um, far in advance. They got the people in the room for, I think it was like a two hour session. And the ideas just kept coming because these people work with it every day. So they had all these ideas. They got a diverse group of people from the ambulance driver to the triage nurse, to the, you know, the, the, the nurses that were taking care of patients to the, the even physicians. So that cross-functional team and getting approval to have them focus on this outside of you know their regular work environment. It took work to get it, but it was so well worth it because they had great solutions. All right, great. We've come to the end of our um, question list. I don't know if anybody, if you guys have any other thoughts you'd like to share. As I just kind of pointed out earlier, please use this tool. Um, with, with your team, as, as Susan uh, pointed out, uh, it really is very helpful to narrow your list and at least come up with a game plan that you can move forward. Should you go back and revisit this tool as you're implementing? Yes, absolutely. Please go back, refer to it, and you can adjust it. Remember, this is flexible. The, the nice thing about this, nothing is written in stone. It's an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, we'll make it available to the participants today so that you can utilize it um, and just use it wisely and uh, enjoy, have fun. You know so what, Fidel, I would like to, if I could, Tracy, just add one thing. The risk assessment goes hand in hand with this. So earlier we answered a question about unintended consequences. So at a later time, you also want to take a look at a risk assessment because those solutions that bubble to the top, particularly if they're big effort, you want to do a risk assessment with those as well. Great. Right, we had an observation you. come in um, on the question and answers, just saying the timing of this tool is very helpful as we go into the um, the year end. And um, Excellent. Yeah, that's a good point. Very true. All right, all. Thank you for joining everyone. Uh, we are here. We'd love to talk about whatever you want us to talk about. So send us an email, let us know what's on top of mind for you and, and we'll put another webinar together. Thank you for joining.